the one thing in the furniture industry, especially at Sangers where I work, everybody there is like a big family. And that's what the furniture industry brought to Caldwell County. It brought uh, family pride. Father, grandfather, sons, daughters, everybody worked in the furniture industries. And you had years and years of experience and generation after generation done the same thing. I started working in furniture when I was in high school, when I was 16, which would have been probably 74. I started working through ICT program at school. I worked at uh, Broad Hill Plant 3 in Whitnall, and I went to work at uh, Firefield Plant 2, and I worked there two and a half, three years, something like that. And that's when furniture first kind of started getting slack. They was doing some layoffs. I got laid off. Well, the first time I was probably about 20. That was in 73. And then I went to textiles and then I went back. For the last 15 years, it's been at Broad Hills mostly. I started out sweeping to get a job, and then they moved me up to sewing. And when they started their tick that they do there, and so I went back and I helped work on the fiber machine. And then we, uh, they moved me over to sewing, and I sewed the ticking part of it that goes inside of the upholstery. So I decided I wanted to work in furniture, and I I worked in uh, more or less like packing, and I had to pack glass. I worked there, I don't know, maybe a year or two, and then I went to work for Singers in 1988. When I went to Singers, I worked in the cabinet room, putting things together, putting pieces of furniture together. It seems like Singer, one of the other big plants in Lenore, closed down to start with. I worked at uh, Singer Warehouse on truck dock, 16 and a half years till the mid 90s, till it finally shut down. I don't remember exactly what year, like 90. Two, three, somewhere along in there. They like, took us all in for a meeting one morning and said we had two weeks. And that was going to be it. And they were shutting it all down. Singers was shutting down. I mean, they were laying off and we knew that it was coming, that they was going to end up, you know, just closing all together. I went to work at uh, Hamry's from Singers. I went to work at Hamry's, and I worked there for a couple of years, maybe three. And then I decided I, I, was, I didn't want to work in furniture anymore. But when I got into it, I really, I mean, young, fresh out of high school, not really concerned a lot about career, not really concerned about your future, what's going to happen, uh, how secure is this industry. So I figured, hey, I'll go to work. I'll go to work where Daddy works. It was good enough for him. It was good enough for me. When I got into upholstery in I3, there was not a lot of talk 
of upholstery being hurt in overseas market. There was talk of case goods. In the early to mid 90s, it was getting really bad. People was losing jobs left and right. A lot of work was going to China. Uh, you could see uh, a lot of import stuff coming in. Uh, there was a lot of people from China coming in and walking around plants and interviewing people and talking to people and trying to figure out how to do things so they could take it overseas, basically. They done the trade bill, you know, whether they took away our work and uh, opened it up, and they're sending most of it to China about five years ago, and it's uh, it's just went downhill ever since. They're still sending it over on the boats, even though they're getting it back. A lot of times, that's not put together right or sewn properly, and. Uh, there, it's mildewing. They even tried to put sewing offshore, uh, and you'd get so much sewing in, and then you turn around, and it cost you so much to fix it, or it cost you so much to ship it back to China to have them turn around and resew it. I've seen leather built over there. And as it comes in, it's got some type of mold growing on the side of it from where it's been in containers and been shipped overseas for so long. Then you end up paying somebody to clean something and to try to get this mold out of this leather out of two, three hundred chairs or sofas. They have had to put so much money into doing things like that. I can understand how the, the, the companies now have to go to, to China because the first ones that started, they're the ones that started it. They're the ones that got the ball rolling, whoever the first company was. And the rest of them they had to follow because they couldn't compete any longer. The money, I mean, they have was having to charge more, but... I think it's going to come back to bite us. I understand it's all about money and how you can make more money and stuff, but still you can you can make money and still kind of look out for your fellow human being and stuff. But most big businesses don't look at it like it. Well, it's, they just seem to be, they want more out of you and they're putting more on you to do, whereas sometimes used to three people would do a job and now there's just two of them doing it. We haven't had a raise on production work in five years and they have cut our rates and that's not right. But they didn't say anything to us, they just do it and know that you have to do it. Uh, they cut us and they just keep cutting. Uh, you go from $18, $19 an hour down to $9 an hour, $10 an hour. That's a big cut. And then lose so many hours a week to go with that. You're not living on a third of what you were living on before.